Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the, the show. You're going to be so happy today. We have an inspiring speaker and success story, uh, German-born Sabine Becker, and she is an inspirational speaker. You will be inspired, who appeared on PBS and the Oprah Winfrey Network because she was born with short arms, very short arms, and she lives a fully independent life using her feet for daily living tasks. Can you imagine? So, um, Sabine, you always inspire me. Welcome. Hello. Good, mo good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. It is so good to see you. And thank you for having me on this podcast. Yes, uh, Joe. Uh, to describe me perfectly, I I was born with very 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 small arms due to the drug thalidomide. Uh, maybe your viewers and listeners know about thalidomide, but just a small recap: it was given to pregnant women in the early sixties to help them with morning sickness. And little did they know that about twenty thousand babies would be born with very, very small arms and other health problems, which thankfully I have never experienced. But, you know, I, I'm a motivational speaker and a transformational coach. And I always say that you got to do with what you have. You got to do to the best you can. And that really has been throughout my life. Uh, it, I never felt sorry for me, nor did my parents. My parents were very instrumental in my life. They said, you have your feet, they're working good. You are going to start using your feet for all daily tasks. And I mean, I got to stop you there. Number one, uh, kudos to your parents, right? Yes. For, for really figuring out something that would work. But how did you learn to use your feet for daily tasks? Yeah, a absolutely excellent question. In the early 60s, that wasn't easy. It wouldn't be easy today, but in the early 60s in post-war Germany, that was a very difficult thing to do. And there my mother showed so much pers perseverance because she would not stop looking for a physical and occupational therapist who was willing to, to teach me how to use my feet. And we started me holding a pencil in my foot and then we worked up to getting dressed and brushing my hair. And later on, as a more adult young lady, I even learned how to put makeup on. And here, here it is. I even drive my non-modified car with my feet. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing. It really is amazing, you know. And I mean, I can hardly handle doing some things with my hands. And there you are. <laughs> Getting through each day using mm -hmm. your feet. I mean, really hear this, people. Using your feet for every daily task. She cannot use her arms because of her short arms. So I, I think that's truly amazing. And I know that on top of that, which of course is enough, <laughs> you were driving a car one day and tell us what happened then. Yeah, that, that moment changed my life. What happened 10 years ago, was I was driving my car in New Mexico, in the mountains of New Mexico. And I want to only say that because it's very, very remote from any major city. And I'm driving along and suddenly the road changes completely. It changes the colors, orange, yellow, red, and it suddenly twists and turns. And it just looks so bizarre. And I thought I was in a nightmare. And guess what? I really suddenly was in a nightmare because what happened is I experienced a massive stroke while I was driving my car and the car was speeding up from a regular 55 miles per hour to an 85 miles per hour because my foot accidentally tapped the gas and Imagine a wind, windy mountain road, oh. not a good place to have a stroke. Not that there is ever a good place to have a stroke, but it was really, I could have died that day. I was very lucky. Some people say it's luck. Some people say it's a miracle. Others say somebody was watching out for me because that very day I had a person in my car and he really is 
I have known him for many years and he was just never with me in the car. But that very day he was in my car and he noticed immediately there was something terribly wrong because I had passed out by that time. Oh. And he grabbed the steering wheel in the last minute. Otherwise, we both would have crashed uh, through the guardrail into the Rio Grande River, which was right there on the right side. Uh, needless oh to say, I wouldn't be here today. That is amazing. And surviving, you know, all the recovery of a major stroke yes. like that, in addition to everything else you deal with daily. I mean, it's just, yeah. to me, it's mind blowing. And yeah. I, I know it's, um, I just want to set a little more context, because on top of that, you have children, right? Mm -hmm. And you've been yes. married, and you have a wonderful, you know, life. Yeah, You're yeah, I really do. Uh, I have an awesome life. It was a little bit difficult to get here, <laughs> but, you know, I persevered. And you know that uh, how I, I pushed through life and push. Maybe people see that behind me. It means persevere until success happens. And that was my mantra for most of my life to, to never give up. And, you know, I have an education I worked as a social worker, a psychologist, I had my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful son, uh, who's 39 years old, I cannot believe it. And my beautiful son gave me three, three beautiful grandchildren. So I, I'm even a grandma. So I had, really have a full life. But of course, you know, when you're born like this with any adversity, you really need to find ways to push, persevere until success happens through that adversity. Well, I know, you know, just first of all, thank you for that inspiring story. Um, I think all of us can go, wow, you know, so what can I do, right? So what would you tell us to push through our own adversities? What would you say to do? Yeah, thank you for that question, Jill. When I was uh, in the hospital and it looked dreadful uh, after the stroke, I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk, I couldn't do anything for myself. I knew I had to somehow survive this and I was going to somehow have to walk and talk again. And I, I eventually came up with what would help me. And therefore now 10 years later, people who encounter adversity, I came up with six survival tips. First of all, we need to have hope because hope is the expect expectation of the positive outcome. Because if we don't have hope, we cannot even take the small baby steps it takes to get our journey, journey of hope started. But also besides hope, we need to, the action, and my action was to push, to literally push through all the difficulties it took to have to start walking again. I mean, I was 50 years old and I had to, I couldn't even mo move my toes. So I really had to push through that. And I came up with what helped me a lot and what helps other people today it's a positive mindset. The belief that, yes, I can. It might be challenging right now, but I can. And then, of course, reframing. Yes, it looks pretty tough right now going through all these obstacles and adversity, but I could reframe that into a meaningful opportunity. And, the, you know, Jill, it just sometimes takes plain courage and stare it right in the face of our adversity instead of giving up. It's courage also and the resilience. And of course, and my favorite, perseverance. Those are the six survival skills, the push survival skills I came up with to not only help myself in the, at that time 10 years ago, but today also I had to help others who, who really go through a lot of adversity and what I also found helpful, if you think about it, you are the most influential voice in your life. 
And therefore we need to watch that inner voice. And because we believe what we tell ourselves and sometimes they're in the ICU and then later on in the um, rehab, Sometimes I said to myself, believe it or not, I said it, oh, you know, I will never walk again. This is so hard. I cannot even take one step, let alone walk. Uh-uh. I really cross-examined that, that it's a limiting belief. And is that true? Why do you say even you say that to yourself? So, so many things I help other people with today. And these lessons were literally born from living with a significant disability and then living with a fallout from that massive stroke. Yeah, well, you know, you have you have learned so much and now you teach so much and yeah. you are an inspiring daily example, I think for anybody who crosses your path and is lucky to hear from you as a speaker and to be in your presence. So really, I just thank you for these practical tips that we can do. I love the push strategy and, and uh, simple things. And, you know, we really do have to kind of really watch our own thoughts, like, you know, thought police, right? And it's, yes. it's easy, let's be honest, to kind of go down a negative slope, I think, yeah. right? Don't you? Yeah, I think so too. When we all shut down in 2020, I mean, it, it was so easy to find negative news, negative this, negative that. However, we need sometimes to to reframe and to 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 rebuild uh, these negative thoughts into wonderful opportunities. I'm not saying that the pandemic was great and it certainly was not great, but we have come out of that pandemic with a few good things, and that was just a question of reframing, because. If it wouldn't be for the pandemic, I wouldn't even be talking to you because today we have Zoom. <laughs> so we reframed that really well. And yeah, it's um, it's just about reframing your adversity and find somewhere just a wonderful opportunity. And what I also found, what is the legacy you want to leave behind? for your children, for your grandchildren, or for anybody who's close to you. That has helped a lot, a lot of people when I ask this question, what is the legacy you want to leave behind? Hmm. Well, that is the question we're gonna leave our listeners with. What is the legacy Absolutely. you want to leave behind? And I think that's really powerful. And Sabine, I, you know, really thank you for today. And I know, I know our, our listeners and viewers are going to want to connect to you. Please tell us how, how they might connect to you. Okay. Please go to my website, sabinebeckerspeaks.com. And I have a free, and it, it is free, Push Survival Guide. And that unlocks, when you download the free Push Survival Guide, that unlocks the six survival skills I just talked about. And also, you can book a free 30-minute discovery call with me and chat to see how I can help you to find your passion for the possible. Oh, I love that. Your passion for the possible. Ooh, love that. <laughs> well, definitely you want to go do that. It'll be in the show notes too. Please go connect with yeah. Sabine. Uh, she will lighten up your day and brighten up your life. Thank you, Sabine, for being here. Thank you so much, Jill. It is always a, such a pleasure to see you. Thank you to you too. And it's wonderful to see all of you today. I hope that you were inspired by this show. I know I was. Um, go check out jilllublin.com and keep being consciously kind, please. We'll see you again, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>